Hello everyone, my name is Chris, also known as the Cryptic Chameleon on Twitch, Cryptic Chameleon 83 on Twitch specifically, and I want to thank you for joining me for this spoiler-tastic review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. If you don't want to see spoilers, or hear spoilers rather, because this is definitely not a, uh, I'm not doing anything visually with this, it's just me talking, sorry. Um, but that being said, if you don't want to be spoiled, go to my spoiler-free review instead, because I have a spoiler review and a spoiler-free review. So this is the spoiler tactic review where I go through everything, and once again, I will reiterate from my spoiler-free review, I am a huge fan of the original whoops, the original Ghostbusters um, franchise. I grew up watching the original one on VHS. My aunt took me to see the second one in theaters when it came out in 1989. I watched the cartoons religiously. I did see the 2016 one, and um, I'm not going to get into a review of that here because that's not what the point of this is. So, um, I am not going to do a complete play-by-play -play of the movie itself and all of its key plot points, but what I will be doing is getting more into uh, some of the things that I found problematic and really enjoyed as well that you couldn't do in a spoiler-free review. So overall, uh, again, as I said in my spoiler-free review, uh, I put this on par, if not better, than Ghostbusters 2. All right, so if you're looking for the Too Long Didn't Read it's a great movie overall, especially for a Ghostbusters fan, albeit a little bit predictable. And it um, it really just punches all the right buttons emotionally. You don't care that it's predictable because you're having so much fun with it. But that being said, um, if I had to give it a rating, probably 3.5 or 4 out of 5 overall. And you might say, how could you say that? You're a Ghostbusters fan. That's blasphemy that you're not giving it five stars. You need to five star all the things that are Ghostbusters related, right? No, I don't because um, I also appreciate films for what they are. And if I'm being honest, as much as I loved and enjoyed this movie, and I did, um, so I just want to make that 100% clear. There are some issues that I had with the movie that just um, that made me lower it a little bit. And uh, we'll get into those in a moment. But first off, I will say the uh, the opening scene of the movie was great. And um, you really... So the scene opens with Egon, which I, I have to give whoever credit for whoever was the stand-in that they used for uh, Harold Ramis. Uh, probably along with some, you know, they probably took some video that was... Um, you know, him from interviews or something else, uh, or maybe use photos along with some CG to really, um, bring the likeness out. It was, it was very well done. Um, so the opening was, uh, very emotional for me, uh, especially before they hit the opening credit that there was a moment immediately before that where, um, you know, well, this is a spoiler review, so I'm sorry for those that are, you know, uh, <laughs> that that might not realize this is a spoiler review at this point. I almost feel bad revealing this. People are like, ah! All right, anyway. Uh, Eon dies in the first, like, two minutes. And it was heart-wrenching to see that. I mean, he, he died in the best possible way in the movie. And obviously, they had to kill him off because Harold Ramis is dead in real life. He can't come back from the dead to play Egon. Or can he? Well, yes, he can in some ways. Um... I feel like all of the acting with the kids was very well done. Um, the story about them having to journey to the house, the cameo with Annie Potts as Janine was very well done. It wasn't just a throwaway cameo. Um, you, you could tell there was some emotion there, and it was very, very well done. Uh, the sets themselves were incredible. The farmhouse set was incredible. The bringing back the Ecto was amazing i was a little bit disappointed that i didn't see slimer somewhere i'm sure that slimer's in there uh and some other ghostbusters fan that's a bigger fan than i am is like, no they totally had slimer in this part over here and you just didn't say fine if i didn't see slimer that's fine i'm just saying i didn't immediately see slimer but what i did see were a ton of behind the scenes references to the original ghostbusters that i thought was uh that were all just 
little love letters. They, if you did not see the original Ghostbusters, you're going to miss out on so much of this movie. Uh, everything from certain background dressings, like a symmetrical, vertically stacked bookcase uh, or books, uh, to uh, little things like uh, you know a maid service tag being on a circuit a circuit breaker. Um, there are just so many little things. A shot of a Twinkie at one point. A uh, you know the the set dressings in the background. The fact that. Um, and I saw this in some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, that, they, that Egon owned the same toaster that they used in Ghostbusters 2, and it was just sitting on a table. Uh, you know, stuff like that is really, really um, where you could see that this is a calling card or a love letter to original fans. Um, in terms of the overall performances, I thought they were really well done, with some exceptions. And those exceptions are um, with Paul Rudd and the woman who plays the mom, whose name I can't remember. There, There is a scene after they've been possessed by the terror dogs where I just kind of felt like it was, it just, it kind of, fell flat it, it 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 brought me out of the moment it, it just dissolved my suspension of disbelief because it felt like it was one little it was a little comedy thing that was kind of pushed and i was just like well that came out of nowhere like what I'm like huh like um so basically the the kid's mom is possessed by zool and she does this thing when she comes upon paul rudd who is now the the key master where she just kind of suddenly goes from having clothes on to transforming and having this really glittery dress on. Um, and I get that they're, they're trying to do a callback to the original where Dana had that flowy dress on. But the problem is, is that, you know, they never showed that Dana transformed her existing clothes into a dress. And, I know that that's taking some creative license, which is fine, but it just felt like kind of a cheaper, more comedy, like more modern comedy when they had that moment. And I, I it, it pulled me out of the movie a little bit. The other moment like that in the movie, and I kind of hate saying this, is uh, obviously during the climax of the film, the original Ghostbusters show up. And I don't have an issue with the original Ghostbusters showing up, but the issue that I have is that the movie just stopped. And you might say, well, gee, it's supposed to stop. It's the original Ghostbusters coming back. And that's not, I, I don't disagree with you. But what I mean is that this was not a good stop. This was a, we're stopping and it's not like a, uh, a pregnant pause it's not something where you're like oh um yeah it's the original ghostbusters and then they get right back into stick that was really good this was it stopped and you can't believe that gozer didn't just blast them into a million pieces right there because they were just spending so long bantering um the way that they introduce the Ghostbusters is fine. Um, I think it's just the interplay between them where they're sitting there just kind of drawing it out really brought down the, the movie. They're sitting there like, you know, like Gozer asks the question again, are you a god? And they sit there and Ray is like debating with the other two guys as to whether or not he should say yes. And you go, you know, if I was Gozer, I would just presume at that point the answer is no. If you have to determine whether or not you're going to say you are a god and you have to sit there and confer with your associates for a good 20 to 30 seconds before answering, I, I, I'm sorry, you're not a god. I'm blasting you. And so those moments, as much as I really, truly loved seeing Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Ernie Hudson together, and um, 
yes, I mean, seeing them with a facsimile of Harold Ramis all together, um, that was truly a joyful moment. I just felt like the dialogue between them just wasn't there. It just didn't, it, it didn't really connect with me. And it really felt like the movie slowed down at that point for no good reason. I think that they could have had better dialogue between them and not slowed the movie down to a point where it's like a crawl and where you start disbelieving that Gozer would put up with this this BS from these guys. If I was Gozer, I probably would have zapped them very quickly. Speaking of Gozer, holy cow. They did some incredible stuff with Gozer. I don't know if it's the same actress. I would have to look that up. But that being said, they just, whatever they did with the look of Gozer. So she looks a little bit different. The kind of, um, the, the kind of bodysuit type of look, uh, with these like bubbling, like, uh, see-through bubbles or whatever. They still have that, but it's different. It's done in a different way. And one of the most impressive things that I think honestly was a combination of visual effects and practical effects was the way that her body lit up from the inside through whatever the suit was. I thought that that was amazing. Whatever that effect was, was just absolutely incredible. And, um, there really was some, some great stuff there. Um, not sure on the continuity of, uh, the power of crossing the streams or not in terms of how well that worked in terms of Gozer's power level, but you know, that's fine because it all works out in the end. The music I thought was very well done. And, uh, the music was, was definitely reminiscent of the earlier soundtrack. But as I mentioned in my spoiler free review, there were times where I felt the music just didn't fit the action of the moment and there were times when the music was louder than I think it should have been. Um, there were times when the music definitely distracted from the movie rather than being an asset to the movie. And that's really sad because I think that the composer here did a really good job of interpreting the original score while adding in new elements that were really, really well done. But I think that the... The mixing of it wasn't good. And I also think that it felt like the movie was leaning on you hearing the emotional cues from the first movie in order to drive your emotional cues in this movie. And in some cases, that worked perfectly. Like when they're catching Muncher, when they actually catch Muncher, and Muncher is amazing, by the way. Muncher is probably um, the, the just one of the best interpretations of a ghost using more modern uh, technology that I've seen. And I, I really loved Muncher as a character. It was great. That being said, um, like a spot where the music perfectly worked was when they finally trap Muncher. They, they pulled from that cue, those musical cues of catching Slimer in the original movie and it works perfectly. And they add a little like almost triumphant sound to the end of it. And that, that, that was really, really cool. But there are other times where you just go, I, I don't know if this fits what's going on on the, on the, the, on the, on the screen right now. Like I like the music, but it just doesn't seem to fit. And so that's one of the drawbacks of the movie. I'd say another drawback for some, I would say maybe not for myself, but, um, the plot is very much a cookie cutter plot. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that pretty much you can understand and know, have a good sense of what's coming throughout the entire movie. Um, so for example, Kit or my son, who I refer to as Kit, um, picked up probably within the second or third scene of something happening that the ghost haunting the farmhouse is Egon. He was like, yeah, I know who the ghost is. And I'm like, Shh, I'm trying to watch the movie, but I knew who the ghost was too. I think it, it was pretty obvious who the ghost is in the farmhouse, um, to those who are fans. And for those who aren't fans, I can't imagine that they wouldn't pick up on it very quickly. 
in terms of the overall storyline, um, you know, I think the fact that they transplanted everything into this town, that Shandor had uh, founded the town, and that the Shandor mine was there, it, you know, it, you, you start, again, if you have no reference of the original movie, it's not going to, those aren't going to trigger the same things as it does for me. But even then, once you start getting a sense of, oh, Shandor built that building in New York City that they said blew up in the 80s and this, that, and the other, you start getting a sense of, okay, that's where the central hotbed of supernatural activity is going to be coming from. And um, before even seeing the movie, I saw the terror dog chasing Paul Rudd out of the Walmart, and I'm like, okay, so he's our new... He's our new key master. Who's going to be the new gatekeeper? Well, the only other female character that I know of that would be the new gatekeeper is going to be the mom. And that was me before even seeing the movie without watching any spoiler, you know, stuff. I I knew that that's where the plot was going to go and that in the end uh, they were going to fe- be facing Gozer again. And it's not exactly a secret. I think, though... What makes up for there not being too many twists and turns in the plot itself is the amount of heart that the movie has. Um, I, I, I just enjoyed the ride so much. I enjoyed how they told the story. I enjoyed the characters being in the story so much that it didn't matter that I knew where the story was going to go. You know, uh, it, there are some times where you want a movie to have a certain level of mystery or intrigue. And even though this one didn't, that didn't change how much I loved the movie. So um, in that regard, it's an extremely successful story in that you don't care that you know where it's going because you're just enjoying the ride. I um, I was uh, flat out crying at the um, last five minutes of the movie. Um, You know, seeing Egon supporting his granddaughter's proton pack, helping her uh, to, to shoot the ghosts, or shoot Gozer. And then also, um, they got, they had, you know, the original three Ghostbusters and kind of showed... Harold Ramis slash Egon as a ghost kind of standing with them and um, Phoebe. And it just, it it broke me seeing that. And um, I thought the ending of the movie um, where he moved on after finally getting to show his daughter he loved her and um, getting to meet his grandkids or hug his grandkids. Um, I think that was just such a, a great way of ending the the film and really making it a, a love letter to Egon slash Harold Ramis. And you could tell that I'm even getting emotional now thinking about it. So it it was just a really, really good um way of wrapping it up and then of course there were not one but two post credit sequences uh which i thought were great um one of them one of them was uh i was i I, they were listing like the cameo people in the credits by the way i love the the kind of the notebook type of uh schematics that they used in the end credits um and they're going through the cast and they they say special appearances by i believe they said that by the different people from the original and it lists Sigourney Weaver. And I'm like, Sigourney Weaver wasn't in this. Like I didn't see her anywhere. At which point they cut to a post credit sequence with her and Bill Murray. That is absolutely uh, hilarious. And then um, at the very end, they have uh, Ernie Hudson and Annie Potts and they, uh, you know, they, they bring the Ecto back to the original firehouse, which is dilapidated and falling apart. And, Some people have argued that this opens up the door for them to do more movies. And obviously Ghost Corpse is a uh, secondary or a small mini production company within Columbia slash Sony designed specifically for the Ghostbusters properties. 
my thing is, I really hope that they don't rush to produce something new. In fact, in some ways, I hope they don't produce anything new. I hope another movie doesn't come out. This is the perfect wrap-up to the Ghostbusters franchise for me. I, I can't foresee a way that they could continue this without it becoming really cliche really quickly. Um, like, you can have the old guys come back in the original firehouse, and you have a new crew, and you're kind of telling the story of this new crew coming together under the guidance of the old guys. But that kind of was done with Extreme Ghostbusters, and I, I think that Extreme Ghostbusters, the cartoon, was very underrated in some ways because I thought they did it pretty well. Um, the other direction you could go is that, you know, the kids from this movie get a little bit older and they're going to do their summer internship or something like that in New York with the original Ghostbusters. But again, I don't feel like you could... Like, where do you go with the story? I mean, clearly you would have to have a new bad guy ghost, and please do not bring back Vigo. Um, you know, Vigo would not be a good <laughs> character to bring back. That would be really, really over-relying on nostalgia to bring back Vigo. I don't think Vigo uh, should ever come back. And in fact, I thought that the climax of Ghostbusters 2 was very anticlimactic now that I think about it and reflect on it. But that being said... I can't see a good way for them to continue the franchise. Therefore, I ask Sony and uh, Ivan and Jason Reitman and all the cast and crew, please, you know, think very, very hard before you decide to try to push this forward at all. Because I really don't think that there's a good way to transition from this to another movie just like i didn't think that continuing past jurassic world was a good idea i thought jurassic world was a good movie you know and some people would say well why would you think that was a good movie it was just clearly a throwback blah blah blah, blah. look that's not the point i enjoyed the movie i'm allowed my opinion i enjoyed the movie but i didn't see the sense of continuing beyond that i understand they left room to go beyond that but like there was no point and the other two movies felt incredibly forced. Um, or at least the, the, the second sequel felt forced. I, I, the third sequel, I, I don't even know just like what they're thinking. It, it, it looks terrible. It looks absolutely terrible. That being said, um, this movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife, was not terrible. It was incredible. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I put it probably above Ghostbusters 2, to be honest with you. And... With the exception of those two moments where I really felt like just there was this we're trying to be funny vibe with the Paul Rudd and the mom. Um, it was very much looking at the camera and saying, look, we're being funny. Uh, at least it felt that way to me, so it didn't feel authentic. And like I said, as much as I loved seeing the guys in the original suits and the, and the with the packs on, it's... It was just, it stopped the movie dead in its tracks, not necessarily in the best of ways. And I really don't like saying that because I loved seeing them in the, the proton packs and, you know, getting to see them interacting. But it just, something about it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel authentic. So, um, other than that, I, I don't have a ton else to say. Uh, except that uh, I have already pre-ordered this movie uh, for when it comes out digitally, so I will get it the moment it comes out. It is definitely something that, as a Ghostbusters fan, you need to have in your collection, and you, you just you can't help but love this movie. So um, for those that aren't Ghostbuster fans, I think that there's still something here for the, for you in this movie. I just think that you're going to miss out so much on a lot of the little inside jokes and a lot of the little nods that the movie does to the original. So uh, that being said, that's my spoiler-tastic review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. If you liked what you saw, please leave a comment down below. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And also you can check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash crypticchameleon83. I'm usually on there playing with my son. 
Uh, but sometimes I play on my own. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you there. And in the meantime, thank you for taking the time to watch this spoilertastic review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. And until next time, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs>